Kat Von D, the most famous tattooing artist, as well as a person who embraced New Age, has recently converted to Christianity, has been public about her faith and her journey to Christ. And we're going to look a little bit deeper into her story, as well as some of the takeaways Christians must learn from her testimony. I'm a junkie when it comes to testimonies. I love testimonies. I believe the testimonies glorify Jesus. They build our faith. They expose the kingdom of darkness and they tend to happen again and again. Meaning when we share our testimonies, they have a sense of like, it's like a seed, you know, and it produces fruit. So concerning Catherine Wan Drachenberg, I think that's how I pronounce her name. She has about 10 million followers on Instagram and she's particularly interested in exorcism. But she grew up or was born in Mexico, was born in 1982. Her parents were missionaries from Argentina. In childhood, she would live on dirt floors, no running water, no electricity, so very poor upbringing. But it was a Christian home. They moved to United States when she was the age of six, and then she started to rebel as a young person. She discovered rock music, started to develop free thinking mentality, questioning everything, and became a runaway at 14. Her parents thought she was possessed and they sent her to a lockdown facility in Utah. She was there for about six months and then she went to transitional boarding school. She started to drink. She started to make a lot of money as a teenager tattooing people, inking people, and she was really good at it. In fact, she became one of the most famous ones in the United States. She fell in love with inking people. And she's also a classically trained pianist and she started training when she was about five. But around the youth years, she started to dabble into new age, which a lot of people do that nowadays. When they don't experience new life, Satan offers them a counterfeit, new age. She was never in a a cult or a Satanist, but searching for answers and for meaning in wrong places. When she would practice her new age, with it came, you know, pretty much everything because new age embraces pretty much every little bit of every religion. A lot of demonic stuff is in new age. Now, how she became a Christian is during the lockdown, actually a lot of people who were in new age came to know Christ during lockdown. And so her husband, during that time started to suggest to her that something was not right in their life. These things were more on the political things, but still she started to rethink her faith and her spirituality and started to study the Bible. Now these seeds that were planted there as a child probably started to sprout and it led to her in 2020. She posts online that she threw away a lot of her books, including some of her witchcraft books. She felt that these books were her crutches. In fact, she says that she encountered a possessed person who came to her door asking for the books she had thrown away. And she really got on fire for God. In fact, in one of the interviews, she claims, I'm on fire for Jesus. I don't plan on damning out. Come on, somebody. And according to her, occult, tarot cards, witchcraft stuff, meditation stuff, all these people who do that stuff are miserable. Now, she got a lot of criticism over her baptism. Some people said it wasn't real. I mean, I watched some people's complaints about her water baptism are so lame. And But nevertheless, Christians, you know, have a right to say what they think. And nowadays, anybody with a camera and a little bit of internet um, is an expert on YouTube and on Facebook, and they feel like everyone needs to hear their opinion. Moving on. She claims her water baptism was genuine and not only that, but she wanted to make amends with her followers. She's been proclaiming a wrong message for many years. Now she feels like she needs to proclaim the good message by showcasing her commitment to Jesus. She goes to a Baptist church and one of her reasons for going to a Baptist church is because the way this church approaches scripture. It's a small church, mostly made out of old people, but they show care and love and they don't care who people are celebrities or sinners they welcome them and they show them the love of jesus kudos to the church one of the things she also mentions is about drinking alcohol her stance is that she simply cannot drink not even a drop because it will she says destroy her life and everything around her and i agree with her there's a chinese proverb that says first man takes a drink and then the drink takes the man i believe that you know when christians begin to become sipping saints they become tripping saints and slipping saints. I have another video about alcohol, what does the Bible says and why you should abstain from alcohol completely as a spirit-filled Christian. Now her genre of movies is exorcism. Again, 
I'm gonna take it with a grain of salt because a lot of exorcism movies, they're really made by, I think, Catholic writers because they really glorify the, the horror, the fear, and they're not really watchable. The reason why they're not watchable is because there's a lot of exaggeration and most of the deliverances are not like that. There are extreme cases of people levitating, people changing their voices, da da da. But the kind of movies that Hollywood produces are not to portray deliverance, it's to feed people with fear. Now, some people truly can watch that and actually get spooked into their faith who don't know Jesus. But for a Christian to watch and consume that kind of stuff, first of all, it distorts your view on deliverance because deliverance is not like that. And secondly, I believe that it could bring actually demons into your life. Again, this is her sharing these things and this doesn't mean that everything she does or says is a blueprint or a formula for Christians to follow. Like she says that she listens to secular music but sings Christian music in the church and I have a whole video about whether you should listen to secular music or not. I'm not a legalist but I do believe that Christians should be extremely careful about what they put in to their life, to their heart, through their eye gate and through their ear gate. Here are a few things I take away from her testimony. Number one is we need to plant the seeds of faith in children. Proverbs 22 6 it says train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it. We do not understand how important it is to grow up in a godly home where mom and dad don't hurt each other, curse each other, where they take children to church, where they read them Bible stories, where they introduce them to a healthy whole environment. It changed me as a child and I know to some degree probably these seeds that were planted by her missionary family sprouted. The Holy Spirit used them down the road to put her back on the track to seek Jesus. Secondly, what I learned from her story is this, spirituality without scripture is a toilet water. Proverbs 14 12 it says, there is a way that seems right to a man but its end is the way of death. Satan will offer counterfeit to hungry people. You have to understand we're spiritual beings made by a supernatural God. We will crave the supernatural. We will crave to talk to a spiritual being and Satan knows that. So what he does is he offers a counterfeit and this counterfeit in my generation, the most common counterfeit that most people will drink like water is New Age, is a spirituality that doesn't talk about sin, doesn't talk about hell, talks about a little bit about heaven, that does not talk about Jesus dying on the cross for us, it doesn't talk about our need for repentance and doesn't glorify the scriptures or put the scripture as the word of God but really kind of teaches this many ways to God, this very wishy-washy demonic doctrine and it's really a toilet water. It's a spirituality, it looks like Christianity because it has certain verbiage there but in reality it's toxic and it's polluted and it's demonic and it can lead to the way of death and the devil presented that to her and thankfully Jesus brought her to a new life from new age. The third truth that I see in her and it's encouraging is that true repentance produces fruit. Matthew 3 8 it says therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. You know throwing away books saying hey I'm not gonna drink getting uh, water baptized, these, these are fruits of repentance and I think that's good, that's something to celebrate. People who repent but they don't change, they don't turn around, like their repentance is questionable. People who pray a sinner's prayer but there is no change in their life, that salvation, that sinner's prayer is very, very questionable. Good works, fruit doesn't save us but because we are saved there has to be good fruit good tree produces good fruit. Our goal isn't trying to produce a good fruit, our goal is to be a good tree and good tree is having new heart, new life produced by Jesus but our faith in Jesus accompanied with our repentance, you know, because now we change our way about how we lived, we change our way about what we thought about the Bible, what we thought about heaven, what we thought about hell, what we thought about ourselves because in like in the spirituality that's a counterfeit, we're good, God is bad. In Christianity, God is good, we're bad and we need to repent. So she repents and there's some fruit from that and that's good, it's very encouraging. Number four, and I find that to be also very encouraging, is the water baptism is an outward expression of inward decision. She takes her faith public by getting water baptized. Not just public by saying, hey, hashtag I'm saved, but public by doing what the scripture teaches us. 
And then Peter said to them, Repent and let each one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Water baptism is not required for salvation, but water baptism follows salvation as an act of obedience. Go into all the world, make disciples, baptizing them. We need to reclaim biblical way of portraying and publicly declaring what you decided privately. And that is water baptism. Full immersion in the water, witnessed by the world for people to celebrate, for the devil to know, I switch from the kingdom of Satan to the kingdom of Jesus. I'm going from darkness to light. And that's awesome. Number five, we shouldn't let criticism from Christians to get to us when we are committed to Jesus. The moment she got saved, start posting stuff, of course, this doesn't mean that she's perfect, nor does it, nor do I advocate everything she stands for, believes, uh, or does, because people sometimes become Christians and they still are progressing. But there is an attack that usually comes from Christians. In Luke 15, 7, it says, I say to you likewise, there is more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than 99 just persons who need no repentance. Again, this is in heaven. Unfortunately, on earth people tend to be critical some people don't mean to be critical they just have seen too many fake conversions and they just want other christians to be warned i understand that but christians generally celebrate salvation of people generally but there are a few people that are extremely skeptical look 19 7 when jesus talked to zacchaeus and the bible says when they saw it they all complained all complained meaning everyone close to jesus complaints saying he has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Luke 15, 28, when the son came back, the father embraced him, hugged him, kissed him, got saved. But his brother was angry and wouldn't go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. We shouldn't get discouraged. So if you're watching and you recently got saved and you're still figuring your way out and people are not embracing you or maybe a little bit scared of you, take heart some of them don't mean it others are just mean and so don't let that discourage you keep on walking with the lord and the last thing that i wanted to share is that salvation starts the process of sanctification being saved doesn't mean you're perfect it means you're growing and you're being perfected first peter chapter 2 verse 2 it says as newborn babes desire the milk of the word that you may grow thereby and that's something that uh, Kat Von D says that she loves studying the Bible and that's one of the signs that you will grow. She might still have views and different things that she could grow out with, I pray, and learn to live for Jesus even more because Christian life is a marathon. It's a journey. It's not just a point you reach. It's a walk where you are growing in the Lord. Why am I saying this? Because a lot of times when we see this person that gets on fire for God and, you know, young believers rally around it and it's, it's good, but a lot of times they begin to take how they live and say, okay, well, she does this, he does this, that means I need to do it. Not realizing that when the, when the person follows Jesus, while we should imitate the good things, we should not be blind and understand we are not following other Christians, we're following Jesus. I can be exemplified in many areas for you guys. But please understand, you're not following Vlad, you're following Jesus. You signed up to be Jesus' follower, not to be Vlad' follower or her follower. We're followers of Jesus. We need to spur each other toward godliness and holiness and put that fire in each one of us through our own testimony. But ultimately, we run the race looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We'd love to hear from you. What is your testimony? When did you come to know Jesus? What did He do in your life? Share that in the comments below. Thank you.